Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. You know it's players only. Your Rays keep going. The East and the West are powerful, Trev. Let's talk baseball. What happened last episode? Hmm. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball, presented to you by Seat Geek, the geeks of seats. Geek, that means you're smart. That means they know what they're doing. Uh, and with over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. Uh, go to some games. I think I'm going to try to get some Yankees Padres action in this weekend at the big, the big house. Uh, it's an exciting one. Soto, Tatis, and the fellas. Um, so, yeah, go watch some what, Memorial Day baseball. Grab a hot dog. Grab a brewski. And get your tickets from SeatGeek. Code TALKING. And you get $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek. Download the app. Code TALKING. $20 off your first order. Trevor Ploof. Out on the left coast. Feeling good mm. today. You know why I'm feeling good today. I just told you guys before you, the show. You're not stressed anymore. You kind of you, no. you had that busy patch. And now you're kind of through it a little bit. Summer's coming. You look yeah. great. Sorry I I missed last episode. How was it? It was a good episode. You were you were definitely you left your typical self and you became someone different. I don't know if you is there like an alter ego thing that you're dealing with, or was that a one off? I'm not really sure. But summer is here. There's a bunch of good barbecues. If you're not grilling meat this Mm. weekend, what are you? What is you doing, baby? Yes. Get some meat on the grill, please. Be American. Um, a lot of good stuff happening. I'm giving a Tolkien baseball award at the end of the show, so I'm wow. happy about that. Were you a more of a geek or a jock, or were you a mixture of the two? Um, I uh... you look you look geeky, okay, but you love sports. Yeah. I was so, uh, I was kind of a Jake of all trades, man. I could I could hang him and bang him with the theater gang. I could, you know, the football boys want to play a little low man wins. I'm already down here. Like <laughs> let's <laughs> let's crack. Um, I've never said that before. Um, Trev, that I sounds think- like a line that you go to. <laughs> let's crack. You got that one in the bag. Let's crack. Uh, I always like that the Irish people. They say that's crack crike. Crack, that's their mm. way of saying something's like really cool. I don't know, man. I'll, I'll be honest. Um, okay. My Yanks just, uh, I'll, you know, nobody's words on this show, but he, someone did mention to me that Kyle Gibson fucked me in the ass last night. Um, I didn't, well, I did not. I didn't say, say you that. said that. I said someone said something like that. I think all I said was Gibby shoved last night. And yeah. You just took it there. He shoved somewhere. Um, Gibby's got all these quotes. Oh, we're going to talk about Gibby a little bit this episode. He is never in a million years would I have thought Kyle Gibson would have a 20 year big league career where he's like this awesome veteran leader. But here we are. He's got a and chance to become it. like a Baltimore icon, like the <laughs> the elder statesman with the baby birds. Um, and I was laughing. I saw Tommy Hunter twirling the pill the other day, and I know how much of a chord that strikes for you. Because I was it does. Travin, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and we'll start getting into some baseball. But um, for you, is it like the fact that Big Tommy Hunter's twirling the pill? Is that when when you're all kids coming up? You don't know who's going to have a 15-year career. You don't know who's going to have a one-and-a-half-year career. Like, you're kind of just guessing. So is that why seeing Big Tommy Hunter out there still doing it is kind of funny for you? A little bit. I just, like, know his attitude. Like, he's, like, so loud and so boisterous. (laughs) He just walks around. Like, he literally walks around a clubhouse like he owns the team. Yeah. Like, nobody. You know, like... Some some guys like they just don't listen to anybody. Like nobody tells Tommy shit. Wow. 
and it's interesting like i don't know like he just so i'm just imagining him like talking to steve cohen being like like what's up motherfucker <laughs> like something like that like that's that's tommy hunter so okay I still have i still have the over on the on the save situation there 0.5 saves i take the over yeah, i think he's got like the second most innings pitch in the bullpen didn't we did we say that last episode yeah he was cranking out there He's a little bit mop up duty right now, but hey, hey, you gotta work your way up, Tommy. That's fine, man. I'll I'll mop it up. If freaking he if if there's a game where Tommy pitches the eighth and David Robertson pitches the ninth, like mm. that's nostalgic. Okay, okay. Let's uh let's get nostalgic about some National League baseball as we start off our Friday. Fridays of National League, or do we just not really have a system? Fridays NL. I've been doing Monday AL, Friday NL. Um, man, we had. A, I was laughing when we get to the AL. We had our first players only meeting, uh, and it's been players only on the show. So that's uh, you know, we can talk. Did about I miss that. that? Your Blue Jays. Can't wait. Oh, they, yeah. yeah, they need one. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Let's do a little National League baseball. It's brought to you by uh, the John Boy Media Store. Go, go buy yourself a shirt. Trev's got the hoodie on. I've got a shirt on. We've got hats. We've got everything. We've got a ton of player stuff. Yes, our player stuff is absolutely sick. Yes. That's, I think that's a new word. Just straight up cool shirts. Yes. Huh? They are gas. Ray Turner wants a red tie-dye hoodie. So if anybody's listening yeah. that does our sales or merch, send Trey Turner. Trey Turner. They're making pay full price. That gets rich as shit. To stop being booed by his mom. So uh, go go buy yourself some merch. Let's talk some National Liga baseball. Trevor, two teams that have been battling it out towards the bottom of the NL Central, the Cardinals and the Reds. They split a four-gamer with your Cardinals salvaging the last game. Otherwise, they'd probably begin a what is you doing, baby? Hey, some dudes who should be hi- highlighted. Miles Michaelis gives them a big start on the final game to help do that. Hey, some Reds love. Spencer Steer at first base has been killing it. Trev, they gave him a low number. That means they like him. Matt McClain, the other kid they called up, he had a couple big days for them. Uh, the games, St. Louis won. You're going to see Goldschmidt. Yep. Donovan, Edvin, Nolan Gorman. Uh, they split four, and man, those NL Central standings are just straight up weird. Your guy Ben Lively doing it, Trev, for the Reds. We love that for him. Rockies and Marlins. Yeah, baby. Pump it into my veins. Rockies take three out of four in beautiful Colorado. We're playing some Coors Field baseball look at Elias Diaz's stats on the year Trev have you seen this cat uh pro far he just gets on base these days and how about the kid Zeke Tovar walking it off on the final day Randall Gritchick big game uh the game the fish won going back to their old formula Sandy six innings to earn run maybe that gets him going on track um but your rocks they take three out of four. Brent Doyle gets hurt. Don't like that. Dodgers Braves. Hello. Was this the talk of the town out there, Trev? The Dodgers and your guy, Bobby Miller. He makes his MLB debut. Five innings, one earned run. Out does Spencer Strider as the Dodgers. They win the first two games. That first one was an offensive slugfest. J.D. Martinez, two homer game. He's still got some of those in the bag. Things got testy, Trev. Marcelo Zuna, who helps them win it on the final day. Him and your boy Will Smith. Uh, no slaps, but intense. Dodgers take two out of three. D-backs take two out of three from the Phils. Snakes almost brought the broomsticks. Phillies fight back in that final game. Win it in 10 innings. Trey Turner's getting booed. Alec Bowman, he gets the walk-off for them. But these snakes are no jokes. You might hear about Lourdes Gurriel later. Perdomo continues to do it. And Ryan Nelson, haven't been a 
A lot of talk about the Snakes baby pitchers, but he gives them a good start. Man, the Snakes hit y'all away. I think we might talk some defense this episode. They do well there. Cubs take two out of three from the Mets. They needed it. Uh, They'd been losing a lot of series. Uh, Stroman, man, he is having himself a nice year. He outdoes Sanga. Cookie Carrasco comes back. 6.21 Ernie on the final game of that series. Um, Nico Horner's back. Morell Homers. Never nervous Matt Mervis. Um, So Cubs, let's get back to some winning ways. Let's have fun in the Central. Padres take two out of three from the Nats. It comes down to that final day. Snell gives you a Snell start. Rugi. Rugned Odor saves the day uh, with a late home run uh, that otherwise would have had Padres fans surely panicking. Um, My goodness, Padres. What is we doing? Trent Grisham. Trev, I'll be honest. That's what happened in your National League. You're so fire, Poppy. You're so fucking fire. Love hearing you say those words. Uh, Atlanta Braves, 31-19, and plus 58 run differential, the best in the National League. Mets are a game above 500 in second place. The Marlins, a game below in third. Your Phillies are 23-27. and Hello, Philadelphia. They're starting to get a little rowdy. Nats, 21-29. and Brewers are 27 and 23, a negative run differential on top of the NL Central. But we recently found out that the defensive stats love them. Pirates are a game above 500. Cubbies are 22 and 27. Cardinals, five games back of first place with 23 and 29. And the Reds, a game behind them. So, my goodness, the Reds are closer to first place than the Yankees. Dodgers are 31 and 20. Yep. That checks out. Snakes, 29 and 21. They've kept pace for a while. Your Giants are at 500, Trev. Padres, thank God they won that game. 23 and 27. And the Rockies, a game and a half behind them. Trevor in the National League. We had some big series. We had some fights. Uh, what, what is your favorite numero uno topic you want to give the people in the National League? I we have these defensive statistics. It's you know from um, like Fielding Bible and Sports Info Solutions. My guy Mark Simon, who I reference a lot yeah. uh, on this show. I don't know how we're gonna work that in because this is a league, a, all Major League Baseball. It's not National right. League. It's not American League. So I want to talk about that, but I think right now we can kind of. Talk about the series a little bit. Go uh, and just mention what we think. And then maybe before we get to standouts, we kind of just gloss over this, uh, the feeling stats. Okay. Because there's some interesting stuff in here. And it's really like the who's who of baseball. It's like, hey, you kind of have to play good defense. Makes sense, right? Mm. That's crazy Ooh. thought. I thought Unless it was just walks and homers. Unless you're the Blue Jays. And... <laughs> You, I don't know what's going on with you guys. Uh, so, yeah, like we could start. Let's, let's crom pod it up, broski. That's what we like to do, especially heading into a three-day weekend. Crom pod the shit out of it. Hey, uh, how about this, then? I'll tell you, Cards, Reds, my emotions don't really change on either of these teams. The Cardinals are still playing a much better brand of baseball. I was really happy they salvaged that final game. Reds, let's be honest. They're a little bit of a flyover team this year. But again, every time we talk about him, McLean got called up. He has a couple good games here. Um, you know, Tyler Stevenson's the like the old savvy vet. Um, he has a nice day at the office. Is he? How I, long has he been in the league? Compared to some of these guys, I, I guess yeah. that's what I'm saying. Um, you know, and Spencer Steer, man. Uh, I, I think with those young pitchers who who we've mentioned throughout the year. And, man, I follow a couple Reds people, and are these people so hyped for Ellie De La Cruz? Um, And there's a couple, like the Phillies and Padres that are eating shit right now, like they're so close to the Nats and the Reds that if they get passed by those guys, like that's when the red flag goes up, and it's like, what are we doing? 
Wednesday LaCruz coming up. Every single time I, I open up my MLB <laughs> app, he's got a he's homer everywhere. that goes 600 feet, 120 miles per hour off the bat. His swing is disgusting. Like, it is yeah. beautiful. Like, when when Tatis came up and you saw his swing right away, that's kind of how I feel about this guy. It's like, it's obviously going to play at the big league level. It's powerful. It's beautiful. It's It's silky. Like, there's just not enough adjectives to describe it. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't really understand. Like he's clearly too good for the minor leagues, but you don't want to start his clock, I guess would be yeah, the reason, which is not an acceptable reason. To be honest. <laughs> like, Shouldn't no. it be how this works? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the split series is great for both teams on a four game set. Uh, I do like that you mentioned my boy, Ben Lively. He's actually been pretty good since he's made his debut this year. Um, spent a few years overseas. Yes, my friend from the Phillies org, Lehigh wow. Valley teammates. Wow. Me and Ben Lively have shared a few pops. I'll tell you that much. Okay. Sitting in AAA, being like, what are we doing? <laughs> What's what next, man? Doing? Give me another one. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe I'll find the answer at the bottom of you this. You know what? One. He was my favorite guy that I spotted for on Fortnite. He, was, he wasn't that wow. good. So like he kind of needed me. Yeah. Where like the other guys were like really good, and they like like why is this guy helping me? They just took me out. Ben and I were like a team, so it was nice. It's a special bond. Um, I don't know. I I guess here's what I'll say. Uh, cards. I'm still feeling pretty good. I I think they're gonna be back towards the top of this central division, and you know, sooner than later. Here's what I'll say. Hey, Reds, go throw this whole thing to trash. They're about to play the Cubbies, the Sox, and Milwaukee. Have yourself a good 10 games, and Milwaukee will be, or excuse me, the Reds will be in the thick of the NL Central, which these Central Divisions, Trev, I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah, they're 21 and 29 now. They lost seven of their last 10 games the Reds have. Um but you're right. I mean, you can go on a run. This is both central divisions are up for the up for the taking. Wide right open. <laughs> like that's crazy to say. I guess that's the crazy thing for me. Reds fans, you came into this year with no expectations. Like they could if they somehow run off a nine game winner, like you almost become central favorite. So I you know, I know that's not looking great, but um you uh God, Trev, I, I checked in on Rocky's fish, and it's it was it's tough. I want to correct you. The pronunciation for Elias Diaz is Thank Elias, you. not Elias. Yeah. I was rereading it, and I knew I was saying it wrong, but he's been killing it this year. Yeah, I saw Kelsey retweeted a, a post-game interview that she had with him, and she talked about um, a little adjustment that he made. It was almost like as simple as, I think, opening his front foot up a little bit, giving him a chance to like clear some space. And he like attributed to a lot of the success he's had to that adjustment. You know I love when guys make adjustments. Yeah. Uh, so I'm happy for him. But, yes, his numbers are, are very good uh, on the year. I just um, – yeah. Three of four, though, the Rocks. You're happy to see that. I saw Mike Moustakis get a pinch hit. Uh, I think this, that was last night. or Yeah, pinch hit, like RBI single, score two runs. Malibu Mike still doing his thing there, which is which is awesome. Kelsey uh, asked me. Three of four th- is not, not, not easy to do. Kelsey asked me this week, who, who has more juice in our John Boy Media talking baseball world? Mike Moustakis. Hmm. Or Luis Arias. What does that mean? Like she, she was, she wants to do some content with them, and she was like, "Who do you think has more juice?" And I was like, "It's an interesting question because we've been fiending over Malibu Mike for a while, and he oh. he goes back to those Royals days. He got a big contract. Arias is obviously a stud and might win another batting title, but he's still new on the scene and got traded to Miami. I thought it was an interesting juice question." Like who are would our fans want to hear from more? Kind of. Hmm. I mean, we've had Malibu Mike on our show before, from his living room way back in the day. I think, or was he on sequence? I think he was a sequencer. 
He didn't come on our show. Are you sure? No, we saw him at a charity event or something. But he's hilarious. I, I would probably say Luisa Rise, though. No offense to Malibu. He's got some I mean, real. His juice is flying up right now. Yeah. Uh, Rockies. I'll say this. You know, they went up against some really good pitchers uh, that Miami threw out there, and they did a good job against them. Yeah. You know, scoring three three runs through six against Edward Cabrera. Uh, Yuri Perez, who, you know, is filthy. They got him out in four and a third. Then Sandy, you know, had a quality start against them, but that's what he does. Um, and then, yeah, they just, they did enough this series. Three or four, like I said, is no small feat. Here's, here's my ask for all the teams that we normally try to skip over quickly. Start really shaking up the power teams. Like, Reds, I want you to, like, jump the Cubs for even a week. And, like, let's get crazy. Rockies, jump the Padres. Why not? Nats, jump the Phils. Like, let's really, let's shake the tree. Let's get some people panicking um, as we're a week away from June 1st, Trev. More on the Gurriel brothers Mm. later in the show. But let's move on. Let's start getting into some of the big boys, Trev. I love us, you know. Covering, covering baseball right there. Uh, Brenton Doyle, don't be hurt. You've been playing well. Um, Cole Tucker rehab about to start. Trev, yeah, going. Dodgers Braves. Uh, your Dodgers, you know, we talked a lot about how they're bringing up some kids. You know, our guy uh, Gavin Stone, brother of Colin Stone, who you may know uh, from our Warehouse Game Series. Bobby Milla, who you've been on since, what was that, a spring training start where the kid... Caught your prospect year, eye. Yeah. Um, hey, these are the two teams. If they end up in the NLCS this year, we're all going to say, yep. Um, I don't know. You got a, You got any uh, Dodgers Braves for me, Trev? I mean, it was a great series. Uh, started off really poor for the Dodgers. They gave up four, uh, four spot in the first. Uh, Gavin Stone does, but the Dodgers are just relentless. Some J.D. Martinez, some Freddie Freeman. Uh, they ended up coming back in that game, putting up the eight spot to erase that. That was nice. And then the second game, Bobby Miller, mm. yeah, he makes his debut. He shows up to the field in like a linen suit with the chain on. Like it, he definitely knew the cameras were going to be on him. Like you don't just like come up from the minor leagues and just you don't have that in the minors, bro. You ain't wearing a linen suit mm. to the field in AAA. So like this guy knew what was up, and he killed it. I was stoked to see that right away. Not an easy place to make your freaking debut. That lineup and you know that city. It's 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 very difficult. But he went out and had just an a, an excellent start. Five innings pitch, one earned run. He only walked one person. He's facing Spencer Strider. Like that's a a memorable debut for sure. And he had some big moments. He struck out Olsen and let out a little bit of um, emotion, which is good. I feel like that's. Sometimes he just looks like a stone cold killer on the mound, but you know it's in there. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like there's a lot of sh- stuff in here, excitement, but uh, he tries to hide it. But uh, that was very impressive. And it's something that the Dodgers are going to need as we go through this season and kind of see what the injuries have been for them. Um, and then the last game, Gonsolin versus Elder. Elder's an interesting cat, man, because, you know, if you look at the numbers overall, the results are there. Like he has been excellent. Ten game starter, like a two, like a low two ERA. The advanced stats, ugly, not so hot on him. A very blue baseball savant, uh, but he's just figuring out ways to do it. And I, it's it's interesting because if you're a Brace fan, what do you think of that? Do you say like, man, like we kind of like, like he's been great for us. But are you expecting some regression? I feel like you almost have to. In front offices, this is what they look at. Those expected stats. I mean, that's they gotta know that something's gonna happen, or maybe it won't, and he'll be an outlier. It's it's I don't know where you're at with that. Cause when I see when I see that, I, I tend to the old school baseball player in me wants to be like, what does it matter? He's getting the job done. But like the realistic person who's looking at the data is like, okay, there's something's going to give here eventually. But it hasn't yet. 
Trev, I did on Wake and Jake this week. Me and Biebs did a, uh, you know, just kind of like an unexpected all-star. Like guys coming into the season you would have never expected having all-star campaigns. Uh, Diaz from the Rockies jumped out. Uh, you know, guys like that. Guys that are out of left field so far. Bryce Elder, in a year of Bryce's around Major League Baseball, the stats are amazing that I brought up that baseball savant, and I was in shock. Yeah. It's, it's and if you're a baseball savant person, it's one of the worst baseball savant pages you'll see. I called up our friend, Peter Moylan, who calls Braves games, and I was like, what's the deal? And Peter basically said, your guess is as good as mine. Like, uh, maybe it's late movement. Maybe all the pitches come out of the exact same slot. Maybe it's luck. Nobody knows at this point, but hell, ride it out. Because um, I don't know. I, I always hope there's guys that break the mold. I, I would love if Bryce Elder has a 12-year career and his baseball savant always looks awful and he's nasty. <laughs> um, because that would be baseball, right? So, um, his stats are pretty wild. I, Trev, we could do this almost any episode, but just the Dodgers' offensive stats are, you know, what Smith and Freddie are doing, what Mookie Betts and J.D. Martinez now. Um, yeah, Muncie, uh, you know, Miguel Vargas, the rookie, the on-base rookie, he just jumped over the OPS plus of 100. You know, Jason Hayward killing it whenever he's out there. They, um... They're there. I, the offense is always there. The pitching feels like it's always there, even when they're calling up these kids. Bobby Miller's wearing satin suits. Um, not satin. Oh, stone. Yeah, said. No, Bobby Miller was wearing a not a satin suit. Why can't I think of it right now? A linen, excuse me. A linen suit that makes yeah. more sense. I retweet. I had. I retweeted the Dodgers post. It was so good. Like. He reminds me of Anthony Swarzak. People aren't like, if you don't know who Anthony Swarzak is, he was out of Fort Lauderdale. And this guy was something else when he first got drafted. I hated him. Yeah. And then we became best friends. Swizzle. That's uh, your formula. S- swizzle sticks. Yeah. Um, shout out Braves. Taking the last game. That's nice. Ozzy Albee, sack fresh fly. Way to go. Uh, they're a good team. These are two. I mean, these two teams are just so fun to watch. Can I tell you what the Braves need? Tell me. Someone else in the NL East to like step up. Well, you want you want like uh, they need someone to be chasing them. Just push them a little bit, because otherwise, yeah. I, I wouldn't care. <laughs> okay, so we'll win the East again. Yeah, Rose asked me that. He goes, "Do you who do you think's gonna push?" The Braves more the Phillies or the Mets, and I, I I said nobody like they're gonna win this division. Um, what do you got on the Ozuna thing, Trev? I was gonna ask you, man, because I I you know I know some of the r- rules of engagement, and if you do it once, normally everyone kind of lets it go because it's an incident. But um, a Smith gets cracked, and he's got a history of concussions, and th- this wasn't Ozuna's first time, right? Weren't they barking at each other like this is the the third time or something like that. So he's not, he's done it to other catchers. Yeah. He's got like a long backswing. He stands in the back of the box. It, it's, it's an interesting um, situation because you have catchers who are, they want to get close because right. it helps with their like framing metrics and they think they can steal strikes. But as a hitter, you, know, you can move around the box. I was always in the middle of the box. I, sh- I don't know why. I, I sh- probably should have just like put my damn foot on the back of the box and let my eyes like have a little bit more time to see the ball, but I just never did. Uh, when you have a guy in the back of the box like that with a one-handed finish, he tries to get extended, and then you got a catcher trying to get up in the, you know, to try to steal some strikes. That's when shit like this happens. So it's, it's kind of just a baseball thing. I, I understand like Will Smith is upset. You know, he doesn't want to get hit in the head, and especially in the moment when it happens, you're like, come on, man. Yeah. Uh, but I think that – I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong, and you just have to know the guys that do that and be careful. I don't think Ozuna was trying to do anything intentional. Uh, it's almost like similar to the guys that, like, Jacoby Ellsbury would 
get catchers interference all the time. So you got to know know what these guys do. It's like it's just kind of their swing path, and you have as a catcher, you have to you have to know that, especially if it's happened before a bunch like Ozuna and some of these guys that do the catchers interference thing. You just have to know and adjust accordingly. I was, I guess, I was surprised to see the responses because you know you you see a guy hit someone in the head with the bat. Uh, especially when Ozuna's Q score rating is, uh, you know, pretty low for a ball player these days. Um, I was surprised how many comments were like, Will Smith, back the fuck off. <laughs> and I guess that's a part of it that I haven't, I haven't fully computed and would be really interesting to me as a hitter if I step in the box and the catcher's closer. Get, get out of here, pal. I don't like, I didn't like that feeling at all. When catcher would just come and get up on you, it's like, dude, like, Give me some space. And again, I was I was a middle of the box guy for some reason. What the f- I thinking? Mm, you are a middle of the box guy. Um, Trev, are you more up on the snakes or down on the Phillies? Because snakes win Ooh. their third series in a row. I think you almost have to be more up on the snakes at this point. I mean, they're one and a half games behind the Dodgers, who we just wax poetically about mm-hmm. how they're so good and their offense is clicking and they're bringing up these young guys to do it. But here are the snakes, 29 and 21. That's that's amazing, dude. Like, I think last episode you mentioned like like numbers are starting to matter. We're at the end of May. We're getting into June. Sure, there's a ton of baseball left, but kind of like the way the Snakes have been winning and the teams they've been beating and in a tough division, like it's it's definitely impressive. Phillies, like are are they kind of just like stuck in? Uh, I was gonna say stuck in slow motion. That doesn't mean it. Like hamster wheeling it, kind of. Do you know what that? Mm, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, loading. Like they try screen. to get going, but they just can't get going. They're just right there. Uh, so I'm I'm giving it to the snakes. If you're asking me who I, I care about more right now and who I'm more impressed with, like it's snakes are doing it, man, in a bunch of different ways. Yeah, I mean you can jump around the board with this team. Cattell Marte, 24 game on base streak. Corbin Carroll, absolute freak show. Um, you know what they've got from Perdomo this year is crazy. Merrill Kelly, um, getting back in the mix. That um, you know what, and you know we've got a lot of defensive stats today. How about this? In a year of base yeah. running, and, you know, some teams are absolutely running wild, Gabriel Moreno, who yes. was the catcher they got back in that Toronto Dalton Varsho trade, who, I don't know, you hear about a top prospect catcher, you get excited about their hitting. Um, Gabriel Moreno, 12 guys caught stealing and only allowed 11 stolen bases. Um, in this year, when you look at some of the catcher's stat. And let's be fair to some of the catchers. Obviously, a lot of stolen bases are off the pitchers. But, I mean, there's guys giving up stolen bases at 90-plus percent clips. Um, And right now, Moreno's winning the war. Like, things like that can be impactful, especially when this Snakes team can also torture you on the bases. That's what's interesting to me about Arizona is – before the season, if you were to ask me, like, how are they going to do it? If they're going to be in contention, how are they going to do it? I'd say, well, probably, like, you know, some of their pitching is going to be good. Uh, and then you look now, and it's like, well, they're playing banger defense. Those stats that you reference, that's awesome for Moreno, number one. And number two, the Diamondbacks are third in the league in defensive run saves. So they're playing good defense. They have the seventh most runs in baseball. That's probably the most shocking statistic to me when you think about the Diamondbacks. Like their offense has just been that good. Fifth and average, sixth and OPS. And like you mentioned, they're ninth in stolen bases. So they're getting it done that way. And it's they're pitching just enough. And the defense is there and the offense is there. And it's 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 a fun brand of baseball to watch. They've got a big homestand coming up. Um Sox kid. Uh, with Sale and Whitlock's coming back, so that'll be interesting. Uh, and then they host the Rockies, and then I think the Braves too. So big homestand. They're already sitting pretty. If if you can put together uh, a nice week and a half, again, with a lot of these teams that are struggling, it the more and more buffer, because let's be honest, 
If you're sitting at home and you're not a Diamondbacks fan, you're almost rolling your eyes at this whole segment. It's, it's not a franchise known for their success. That, you know, you're almost expecting the slip-up. And, okay, when, when's that L7 going to pop up on their street column? Keep adding that buffer, especially with all these teams kind of bumping into each other every week. You can find yourself sitting pretty, man. They'll have to do something with their relievers and, and, and figure that out a little bit, but that's, you can say that about pretty much every team. Here's something that's interesting. They're pitchers. Highest defensive run <laughs> saved in all of baseball. So shout out the starters. I mm-hmm. guess it includes the relievers too. Okay. Fielding your position. I'm not I don't fully understand what goes into that. Maybe it is holding the runners. Right? You talked about Gabriel Moreno and how he's throwing guys out. Like some of that has to do with the pitchers and them and their ability to hold runners. You you see sometimes guys just can't do it and they people run wild on them. It's not the case with the snakes. Suarez has been bad for the Phils. Trey Turner's getting booed by his mom. Um, man, they go to play three against the Braves and then three at the Mets. Like, whew, you could, you could see full-blown panic next Friday's episode if they can't find something, man. Too, too many good players on that team for me to think that they're just going to continue like this. I, I think so, too. They're not the White Sox. They're not the White Sox. Well, they're winning series, by the way. Uh, Cubbies, Mets, Trev, what do you want there? I I may have a Mets award later. Cubbies win a series. They needed that. Um, Yeah, a couple really good pitching performances there. Uh, Smiley gets the job done in game one. Uh, Cubs score a bunch of runs. Morrell is just absolutely going off. You're a freaking guy. You kind of look like him. Doesn't he wear pearls, too? We're swaggy, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and then Strowman does his thing. He's been really good. Like he's they're talking about a contract extension there. I think he went eight innings pitch with eighty eight pitches. That still does it for me. I don't care, man. Like these guys that go six innings and throw a hundred pitches and strike out ten, great. Like I like that sounds like an old school baseball take, but I, I yeah. like that. Eight innings pitch, 88 pitches. Come on, how does that not do it for you? Yeah. 17 of 24 outs run ground balls. Like That's how you limit damage, man. Keep the ball on the ground. You know, as a hitter, you're trying to put the ball in the air. You're trying to slug. And if a pitcher can limit you and put put the ball on the ground, they're going to make outs. And let me see what they, where they're ranked. The Cubbies. And we were we were on that early, man. It, it's one of, it was one of Jom's favorite things about Verlander is that, yeah, Verlander can punch your ticket whenever he wants, basically. But he also would get a lot of outs in his first three pitches of the at-bat that save your pitch count, give you an extra inning, save your bullpen. And, you know, Justin Verlander in the seventh inning, 85 pitches in, he's probably better than what's going to come out of your bullpen. So Marcus Stroman likes to keep the ball on the ground. The Cubs are second in defensive run saves for their infield. Dansby Swanson's been doing a hell of a job. Uh, their second baseman, they kind of had a, a rotating cast there to start the year, if I'm not mistaken. Nico Horner's there, but he there's been other guys to play as well. Uh, so that's the formula for success right there. You know, you got to get infield defense, get in the ball. Uh, I thought that was really impressive. And yeah, the... Uh, what do you got on the whole anonymous player on the Mets? Not liking Stroman, kind of barking into the dugout. I feel like I know what your take's gonna be, but I like to hear it. I don't know, man. I mean, Stroman will be the first to tell you he's Marcus Stroman and he's gonna do his thing at this point. That you know, it it rubs a chunk of the league the wrong way, and it rubs a chunk of the league the right way. And when he's on your team, you love it, and when you're against him, you hate it. And that's like part of his formula. So I, you know, at, at this point, was anyone shocked by the situation? Like, no. And you know what? The most important part, Trev, and I come to this when a team's winning or a team's or a players playing well or a play, players playing bad. Your results matter the most. And guess what? Stroman has been dropping that thing mm-hmm. on the field this year. So he can do whatever he wants, man. That's kind of how it works. And if you're going to chirp somebody, which I feel like there's some chirps coming his way. Chirp. 
Like if you're gonna chirp, like you're gonna get it back. Like that's that's just how yeah. it goes. So yeah, and I don't like the anonymous thing. Like you're gonna be. I don't even. I don't even know how that happens. If you're a player in the clubhouse and you have whoever, like some some newspaper there, and you're gonna, hey man, I, I want to say something about Stroman, but off the record. Mm. Right? What are we doing? I don't. Come on. Like face the music, bro. You want to talk shit? Talk shit. I agree. I guess I Stroman ends up being a winner. You've got an anonymous person saying we didn't like that, and Stroman dropped it on the mound. So like, who was it? Who do you think it was? I'm just kidding. Don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the Mets' biggest nerd? Go. <laughs> um, it wasn't Tommy Hunter. Sure, maybe it was. <laughs> it was. Um, Trev Padres save a lot of face because I think they could have been a main topic this episode if they don't win that last game behind a Rugnet Odor. Home run. More on that later. Because they basically would have been tied with the Rockies and they would have had the same record as the Nationals. So by salvaging one... Yeah, dude. So they play the Yanks this weekend. I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking about them a chunk on Monday. Um, So whatever you want there, but I'm good. They took two out of three. And if they didn't, they would be tied with the Nationals. Holy shnikes. Yeah, I mean, dude, Rugnet Odor is your best hitter on a team with, like, four superstars. Well, Rugnet Odor is one of the best power-hitting second baseman ever, so. <laughs> it's kind of true, right? It's kind it? of true. You can, if you want to have some fun <laughs> trivia with the with the gang this weekend, oh, cook up shit. some Odor stats and you'll win. Oh, Between man. some age stuff, some just counting stats Second stuff. baseman home runs, Rugnet Odor. Very Soto feels nice. good being back at home. He has a nice series there. The first game, um, was he three for four? And then the last game, he's one for one with four walks. That's a that's a Juan Soto day for you right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a few things from this series I'll touch on later. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, the Padres got to get going, man. They're it's, missing- it's, it's – it's, we just talked about it. it's the season starting to matter. Things are starting to matter. And like, it's just, aren't they 30th in OPS in the big leagues? I'm going to look it up right now. It's bad, dude. Uh, the Yanks who are so dependent on judge and some of their top of the lineup right now, they're teeing it up this weekend and runs are going to be at a premium. And I'm a little scared. Uh, I think Soto is going to have himself a weekend at the stadium. I think he he might want to let everyone know that he's back. Um, but 29th in batting average. Reminder: the Oakland A's are in the yes. league. Um, 21st, in 25th OPS. in runs. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to watch them this weekend and get get some of my own opinions. But um, I don't know. They're a they're a bad weekend away from being like. I don't want to say the laughing stock of the league, but kind of. Being like the story. I got, yeah, man. It's hard for me to sit here and and think that this is going to continue for them. Because we talk about them a lot in the preseason and the, you know, the additions they made. Obviously, they spent a ton of money to put this core together. And this is like, this is the team. Right. Ain't no help coming. This is a team for like right. seven years. Yeah. So it needs to gel, needs to happen. There's been some injuries. I understand that, but this is um I don't know, man. Trev, maybe they need some I don't blast- know what what can yeah, what can turn it around? I think they need some blast motion. Um mm. because mm. if you're ready to dominate at the plate this season, the last baseball, the number one hitting improvement solution. They're swing trainers and swing analyzers. Attaches right to the knob of the bat that you get that real-time feedback. Counter the pitchers. They've been getting their feedback. Get yours, hitter. You get a 3D swing tracer. I like that. I might need that in the warehouse. And no matter weather, location, season, or equipment, if you're traveling, if you're Trev traveling with your glove on the beach somewhere, bring your blast motion. Work on that swing. My Northeast kings and queens. Winter's tough. You can use Blast Motion year long. Go to blastmotion.com, B L A S T motion.com. Enter code TALKING 
at checkout. You'll save $10 on the Blast Baseball Personal Swing Trainers and Swing Analyzers. There is a link in the description. American League Baseball. Mm. Trev, I mentioned players only. It's because the Rays raise the Jays. They take three out of four games. That one, the Jays won 20 to one. Ooh, baby. We're, we're breaking the scoreboard. We're hitting off position players. Yeah, let's pad the stats. You lost everything else. You lost everything else. Opener day against Bassett to start. Randy doesn't care. You know Jose Siri don't care. They win that one. Uh, I mean, the Jays' video game stats in the 20-run game. Good for you, Shane McClanahan, Wander Franco. I already told you, Jose Siri does not care. He drops it on their head. Um, and then Wander and Randy again, man. Uh, Rays do their thing. Jays, oh boy. Be careful towards the bottom of that AL East. One game above 500, 8 and 15 in May. Mariners four game sweep the Athletics. I don't know, Pop. Uh, Bryce Miller. Yep. Luis Castillo, sure. If you're a Mariners player, you pretty much did well. Uh, and if you're an Oakland player, God, I'm sorry. Because uh, you know what they're on pace for, Trev? A 32 and 130 season. What? Good for you. Good for you, Seattle. You took care of business. And so did the Angels of Anaheim. They take out the broomsticks against the Sox, kid. Holy smokes, we get a shutout in game two. Bayow versus Griff Canning. Pump it into my veins. Angels win that one. Mickey Moniak, former 1-1. He's going a little nutty for the lads. And then Trout, Otani, they're homering in the same game. Your boy Neto has a three for three, and Tyler Anderson gets it done on the bump. Angels, a really nice series win. Sox, be careful towards the bottom of that AL East. Your White Sox take two out of three from the Guardians. I don't know anymore. Make both centrals as messy as possible. I don't care. The White Sox, Trev, we talked about them a little bit. They get the starting pitching from Cease and Kopech. They get some bullpen performances. And they win a goddamn series. I don't know. Romy Gonzalez is helping. Don't have the full scouting report on him. Clint Frazier's up helping the lads? Sure. Fire me up, White Sox. Guard dogs. I don't know, man. I just don't know. Your second place Detroit Tigers win another series against the Royals. Uh, They take the first game in extras. Uh, They open it up with Javi Baez. How about Zach Short? The compound Zach Short with a pinch hit home run. He's got some nice numbers. Tigres, sure. Fire me up. Pasquantino, hot. Uh, That's what happened there. The Orioles take two out of three from the Yanks at the stadium. Hello. After the Yankees have a dramatic comeback win in the first game, Orioles have a dramatic comeback win in the second game. They put up an eight spot in the seventh inning. Snowman alert. And then Gibby. You already know what he did to me. Mm Mm-hmm. That ball was moving late, and the Yanks didn't have an answer. Uh, Orioles get a nice little series win to break up the Yankees May and that's what happened in the American League your American League standings are like this Tampa Bay Rays are 37 and 15 mm-hmm the Orioles three games back 33 and 17 only two in the loss column wow Yanks are 30 and 22. Sox are 26 and 24. Jays 26 and 25. My goodness. Twins on top of the Central. They're in the interleague. Detroit Tigers are two games below 500, which that'll get you two games back. Guard Dogs, four and a half back at 21 and 28. Guardians. White Sox, 21 and 31. They're six games back. Royals, okay. Rangers, 31 and 18. Houston Astros, 28 and 21. 
The Angels with that sweep, 28 and 23. There you go, Halos. Mariners are now above 500, 26 and 24. Oakland, nope. Um, Drive American League, a lot of good action. Where are we a dropping, boys? Where are we dropping Fortnite with fucking Ben Lively? <laughs> <laughs> what is that for? <laughs> I'm trying to like think of something to say about the tiger, something nice to say about the tigers, and you're just talking shit to me. Zach Short, my boy Jake. Um, <laughs> Where's that from? That's an old one. Yeah, that's an old was, one. I think it was like when Odo came on sequence, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't about you. Yeah. Jake, okay. Oh, it's not. not about this Jake, but he like. <laughs> let's uh, let's taste some rays and then. Talk about some Jays, because the Rays part is easy, right? Um, uh, you might hear about some of their starters later. Led Zeflin is 7-1. and one. Remember when they gave him their biggest pitcher's contract in Rays history? It looks like they're figuring it out. McClanahan's a dude of all dudes. Um, and yeah, look at each box score. Randy, Wander, uh, Siri. Yeah. Like, it's... Same old song and dance for the Rays in this series. They get starting pitching. They get timely hitting. They have guys running the bases. Like, this is Rays baseball in 2023. They're a very good team. For the Blue Jays, I mean, yeah, you lose the first game. Um, kind of, a, you know, Bassett gives up six runs, only two of them earned. Um, but then you come back and you get a 20-1 to one game with some, you know, some numbers skewed because I think – the Rays pitched a position player for the last two innings. Yeah. Which seems like silly to me that that's even a thing. Shouldn't, Shouldn't be. even be a thing. White flag it for us, please. But then you get dominated the last the last two games. And McClanahan and Eflin just go and go seven innings pitch, both of them one earned run, I believe. Like you're not gonna you're not gonna beat the Rays if you if they give those starting pitching performances. Trev, like, we this might is not gonna happen. We might even hear a little bit about that later. Um so let's Pivot to the mm-hmm. Jays. I know we joke about players only a lot, um, unless you've seen Blitzball Battle One. Um, have you been in a players only meeting? Have you, you know, what is going on in there? Because I, the Jays' talent speaks for itself. The AL East's talent speaks for itself. That I don't know, man. This this is a team that. Let's be honest. I'm a Yankees fan, so my voice gets lost with the Jays community, so you could call me out, but this feels like a team that's been looking for leadership the past three years. Yeah, I mean, a a players-only meeting is meant to provide a spark. It could go a bunch of different ways. It could be, hey, guys, let's chill the fuck out, and let's just play our game, and let's remind ourselves how good we are, and... There's a lot of season left, and we got this. Or it could go the other way. Hey, we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. This is the way you prepare for a game. We have to start doing this better. We have to start doing that better. And you can get you can get personal in a players-only meeting. It's supposed to be like, let's let the soul out. Right. It's just us in here. It's the boys. This is like our group. Like, let's, let's put everything out on the table and fix it. Um. Uh, We'll see if it works. I've been part of players meetings that definitely, you know, you feel inspired. You feel like, okay, like, yeah, let's, if you get called out or even if you don't get called out, but some of the issues brought up or pertain to you, like it could, it could spark something Uh, for the Jays. I mean, I think a big thing is not really having a stopper type pitcher right now. Like Alec Manoa's really struggled. He's been that for them the last couple of years. I think that's interesting you look at that that could have uh, some sort of effect on their team they're still playing good defense overall um and they're swinging the bats all right it's they're just not getting victories they're not winning trev the i think the manoa point is huge i i think there was an argument since the day he kind of came on the scene he was one of their leaders and you know we've talked about pitchers and how that can be tricky because you're you know a starting pitcher you're only out there every fifth day but his attitude and the way he pitched and his performance kind of resembled what the Jays should be, right? Like, hey, we're going to be a little in your face, but guess what? We're, we ball out. I'm Bo Bichette. I'm going to lead the league in hits. 
I'm Vladimir Guerrero Jr., dog. Um, that, yeah, I feel like him, him having his power zapped this year, um, man, like he, he had nothing for the Rays. And I, I, if you've got a lot of lefties or you're a good hitting team right now, Manoa doesn't have the sauce. Um, that Trev, it's really weird because their offense is somewhat doing their thing. They're top 10 offense. They could be a little better. Sure. Uh, you know, the bullpen and pitching stats are around it. And all these defensive stats we got, the Blue Jays are 1-1 in some of them. That it's like, and this is probably why a players-only meeting happens. It feels like the whole recipe is there, but every time they open it up, like, the cake tastes like shit. (laughs) It's a little dramatic. They're a game above 500. And, and and Gossman and Bassett have been good for them. So like I don't I don't want to say they don't have like someone that could, you know, at the top of the rotation. Um it yeah, it's it, I guess if one thing's going right, something else isn't going right. Like it hasn't just lined up for them. What'd you say they were in May? I think they were I have it right here. That? Eight Hold and on. fifteen, something like that. Where is it? Eight and fifteen in May, seven and five in one run game. It seems like it's a matter of time for this team. That I I got to be honest with you. I, I, they're not doing anything particularly bad. And like, in fact, like most things, like they're doing all right at. They're just not getting the results in the field. So to me, it seems like. I know we said, hey, the numbers matter already, but I've also said there's plenty of baseball left to be played. Like, there's no way I'm counting, like, a Blue Jays team out right now. Like, I know, like, we're here, and they they haven't played well as of late. Bad month. But in June, could you see them going, I don't know, 18 and 10, 17 and 10? They did in April. Like, this, it seems like that's going to happen. I was just going to say, this seem, this feels like a team that can be primed for a 9, 10, 11 game win streak super easy, right? You can get the performances from your starters. That offense can go. I guess what I just checked, because it's been one of my things this season, is there's not a lot of stretches of schedule that offer that in Major League Baseball right now because there's so many good teams. Trev, here's their next upcoming a little bit. At your Twins, Milwaukee, at the Mets. Houston, yeah. Twins, Baltimore, Texas. That brings you to June 18th. Four weeks from now, what are we saying about the Jays? Are you play- if you play 500 in that stretch, that's good. Do you find a go button? I don't know. Here's where I'm going to leave a caveat. If the Jays can stay in the dance, which they're going to. They're so good. I mean, they're, they're going to be around the wild card or, or anywhere. They go into all-star break. Oakland, San Francisco at home, Boston at home, the White Sox, and Detroit. You got five series there heading into the All-Star break where you could change your whole narrative. You can be the sexy Blue Jays. You win your last five series and your record is, you know, whatever the numbers come out to. You can, cha- you can change your whole season on that. Um, but, you know, that, that stretch starts in a month. <laughs> so start taking care of your business. Six and 15 against the AL East. Is that good? So you need to change that up because these are the teams you're going to be competing for for the wild card. So you got to win those ball games. And I think like in my mind, I know this sounds stupid and I guess you can, I don't know if I have bias towards them. I, I don't know. I haven't like picked them to win really anything. I picked them to be a good team. In my mind, it just seems like it's a matter of time. If I know not, Blue Jays fans don't want to hear that, but like it is a long season, and there just seems to be, in my opinion, too much talent on this roster to go six and fifteen against your own division. Like that's step it up, guys. That 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 number should even out. Seattle gets their four against Oakland. Trev, I honestly don't even want to because I, you know, I'm I'm happy that the Mariners took care of business. I'm happy they're above 500. They've got a nice little home stand going right now that now leads into Pittsburgh and the Yanks. But dude, I Oakland isn't for real, so I'm not, you know, <laughs> I, I'm just not going to talk about like 
you know, what Seattle, Seattle did everything right, but I'm not going to start fully tasting them because they beat up on the A's. I'm not going to do that for any team. Yeah, no, we, we don't have to go into too much uh, depth here. Uh, Seattle, yeah, you just applaud them for taking care of business against this team. You, I mean, you got a four-game set against them. You better take three out of four. That's the bottom line. There's no, don't be splitting that series. Definitely don't lose a series to Oakland. Like You have to go and take care of business, and they did. You got them over 500. <clears throat> All these guys, man. I mean, J.P. Sears. Isn't he a former Yankee prospect? Sure is. Ouch, that hurts a lot. Uh, Bryce Miller's just been incredible. He just throws heaters by people. Yeah. yeah like 70% of the time, I'm just going to throw the heater and you're not going to hit it. So, I mean, snaps for Seattle for just having guys in the wings. Like the our Mariners fans told us at the beginning of the year, we have like seven or eight pitchers. I'm like, okay, bro. But they do. Mm. Like they have a they have a legit squad of starters and Bryce Miller is almost like the most impressive out of all of them. And that's saying a lot because they have Luis Castillo and – Logan Gilbert and George Kirby. Use uh, a so shout out Seattle. Way to go. Use Oakland's pitching to get the bats hot. Because if they can change their offensive yeah. numbers well, a little bit, then then Seattle is back fully in play, and you never had to pronounce them dead, which would be really good couple, look for you. Couple good games for Julio. What are his his numbers? Uh, to let's see right now. His OPS is climbing. It's almost at seven now. Um, still putting at war because he's stealing bases and playing good defense. Um, once he gets going too, yeah, I think that puts Seattle. If they have him and Kelnick going off at the same time, that puts them in a different kind of tier. So you almost have to like applaud them. This is like a guy that you're relying on to be a huge part of your offense. You really haven't had that necessarily yet. So if he gets going. I fully believe in this Seattle team to be right in the thick of things. Seventh in the MVP last year, and he hasn't been that. Uh, Trev, I'll give you the option. If you want to talk some Angel Sox or just kind of the whole AL West, it felt like it, it felt like it just happened. Like Texas went, Houston caught up, Angels kind of hit a weird, are they going to leave the party? They rejoin the party. They sweep a Sox team that... My Sox buddies are still feeling good. Like they, they like where they're at with this Sox team. Um, they sweep them. Seattle just felt like they kind of rejoined the party. Um, I don't. There are nine teams in the West and the East that think they're going to the playoffs, and that's going to get messy. Yeah, the Angels have been impressive, and I think for them, the main thing that they need throughout the season is just like their starters to give them a chance. And they've been able to do that. I mean, Shohei's going to do his thing and, and Sandoval is he's going to give you enough length. I feel like he's not a guy that's going to, you know, have these, you know, three, four inning starts. Like he's going to go out there and do his thing. Uh, Griffin Canning gives him a nice start here, which is a nice sign. Tyler Anderson, uh, he's kind of struggled. He gave them a nice start here and offensively, they're going to do enough, man. Like the lineup has, the lineup has become, a little bit longer. I talked about this with C Rose and uh, a lot of angels fans were very happy that we were talking in a positive light about them, but I got to see him with the twins and it was, yeah, a couple of young guys coming up and, and, and like Mickey Moniak hitting at the top of the lineup. That's something new for them. He's hitting some homers, like uh, providing a spark and like, they didn't have that before. Uh, and Zach Neto, like as good as he's played defensively, like off offensively, he hasn't been good, but then now he's kind of turning it on. So that just adds length to the lineup. And like, they don't have, like, there's still some outs there, but they kind of know their role towards the end of the lineup, have good at bats, move runners, try to get on base. Like it, they, they, they're doing just enough there to turn it over to the top of the lineup, which can be one of the best in baseball when they're going well. So that's kind of the formula here. They found some bullpen guys that they like. Um, they're definitely a threat. They're definitely a threat. Keep the train going, Angels, because no one's, no one's going to fully believe until you make us, just because a lot of us have been hurt in the past, myself, uh, by you. Um, I was, I guess there's some Yankees BS. I was happy to see this result because the Red Sox lost, but uh, also that the Halos did it. Um, and... They, uh, the Mariners are going to come. 
that they need to be again. Each win for all nine of those teams are, is going to be so valuable by the trade deadline and by the end of the year. And Trev, baseball, I forget. Oh, you would have loved this, dude. This is actually going to make you crack up. I spoke to a University of Alabama class uh, on Wednesday about uh, sports media and baseball. So, huh? Um, and I, they asked me, they were like, what's, what's something that's changed your view since you've been a part of baseball media? And I was like, great question, because I haven't prepared anything, so I got to think on the spot. <laughs> Um, and I was just like the, it's truly the player side of it that, you know, we, we look at so much of the 1% of the players and how sweet their lives are and, you know, tons of money and, you know, Aaron judge, he's a king of the world. Right. And Hey, Mickey Moniak, a one, one pick. Do you know how many times he got called up and sent down by the Phillies? Uh, a lot. 13 times. Like. You know what? The Phillies basically gave up on this kid. By the way, he's 25 now. They traded him Great in kid. They Great traded kid traded too. him in the Cindergard rental trade. And now, I mean, god, I'm I'm going to make Jolly revisit just every trade that LA and Philly has had together. Cuz if Mickey Moniak becomes their starting center fielder, and again, Philly punts on him after 47 games. The stats are atrocious. But, like, what real shot did you give the kid? And, uh, hey, it's 10, 10 games this year. But the spark he provided in this series alone could have been two wins. Like, I don't, baseball. Baseball's a weird one, man. No, he did. He did really well against the Twins, too. Robbed the homer, almost robbed another one. He had this crazy catch in left field that little short left field uh he went over the fence caught the ball and as he was coming up to show the ball just like mm. just slipped out of his glove uh no he's been great and i guess <clears throat> like i mentioned he's just a great kid like you know he's gonna work he's not gonna get in trouble um sometimes man a change of scenery philly's not an easy place to play and i got in trouble for saying that <laughs> before but it's not like there are certain places that are just easier to play in certain atmospheres like you know the atmosphere at angel stadium is like pretty friendly dude like it's not right. like they root for their team and like the pressure's less than it is in philadelphia hit homer shohei and it's Trout. Just, it, that's it dude i mean sometimes it is as simple as that and uh he's feeling good uh on the red sox side brian bayo looking good he's a. Uh, he is kind of who the Red Sox fans have said he could be. He's putting a run uh, together. Over his last five starts, he hasn't allowed more than two earned runs in any of them. He looks nasty. Uh, but they didn't hit the series, and I guess you can attribute that to the Angels. They did a good job pitching and keeping them down, and they get the sweep. Crazy, man. In the East, jumping back to the east I, you know i told you the Sox play the snakes really interested to see how that series goes um they come home they get cincy um and then tampa again so you just you rarely see a week of like let's go nuts games but that boston offense will get back to fenway and they'll go and that's that um Trevor, your AL Central. I'm I'm honestly good if you want anything on Detroit KC or the White Sox and the Guardians, because I don't, man. They, I, so don't don't be like that. I'm gonna be like that, don't man. Don't be like look that. Look at these records and look how they're performing compared to those nine other teams I just talked about. I'll I'll be coastal elitist for a day, a year, your life. Yeah, for for your life. Yeah. No, I I get it. Look, it's it's. There's only one team above 500 in the AL Central. There's only, I mean, there's barely two teams in the NL Central. The Pirates are on their way, <laughs> on their way to not being 500. They're 25 and 24 right now. So I, I get it. It doesn't look great on paper, uh, but I still want to give some shout outs to some of these guys. Gaddis, uh, Hunter Gaddis for Cleveland. I guess he like cut his hair. I saw this on Fuzzy. Yeah. What? Why is Fuzzy all over our shit right now? Jom had him on. Yeah. He's on my timeline. He mentioned Hunter Gaddis cut his hair. Sometimes you got to have that. You know what? What's funny about that is in 2012, I was a role player, not doing shit. I had long hair, and I decided to cut it. Anthony swears that I just buzzed my head. I had this long, beautiful hair. I just buzzed it. 
The rest is history. I started going off. Wow. Sometimes you just need a little change like that. Just like I mentioned, Mo- Mickey Moniak, change of scenery, Hunter Gaddis, change of hair. He goes six, no earned runs. Guardians win that one, three nothing. And then a couple of good pitching performances for the White Sox there. Uh, Cease and Kopech. I'm happy for Kopech that he's, I don't yeah. know this guy at all. So, like, I don't know what kind of person he is. Uh, but I like watching him pitch. And sometimes he just gets hit hard. I know we had the the tipping, the tipping thing early yeah. in the year, but uh, he's run off some good starts here. This one was seven innings pitched, uh, shutty, nine Ks, more of like what you want to see. Your boy Clint Frazier came up for this year, yeah. and helped the White Sox out. Uh, that's that's nice. And is it Clint or is it? I think it like I a believe he's Clint again. I yeah. think he went to Jackson. Oh, Frazier, he went back. He came back to Clint. Yeah, God, I don't like that. Like, you, if you make a change, you got to stay there. Yeah, part of me does. I, the kid, when he is locked in at the plate, it's it's almost something you'd never seen on a baseball field, which you don't say that a lot. Uh, the the old quote is legendary bat speed. Um, Does he have legendary bat speed though? Can we get this guy a blast motion? I need to see. Yeah, let's find Does out. Does it just look fast? Um, he uh, he had some growing up to do, to put it politely, and I I hope that happened. Um, because man, uh, the bat speed was pretty. Jimmy used to call him the glitch. He looked like a glitch. It looks glitchy. Yeah, it looks like you're Cleveland. missing a frame. Cleveland twenty-two one-run games are nine and thirteen in those. They'd like to reverse that and then i believe they probably would be over 500 if they did no they still wouldn't gosh they're 21 28 they're awful dude they're a game and a half up on the white they Sox. Can't. think about how they much we've tra- dude that's why they i'm like hit. if you want to talk about a central team right now because your twins are in the il and we're running up against it t grace then talk about the tigers who are technically two games out of first place and how you love Playing- a good manager <laughs> don't get me started on that that's not fair <laughs> that's not fair i was just about to freaking you know say what i liked about the tigers and now all of a sudden you're making me think about who their manager is and zach short's hot not... shout out zach short i know he's part of the company but he's had a great start to the year and i love that for him he's hitting some homers not a particularly big guy i don't think no, man. I, I can confirm. You can confirm. Um, yeah, the Tigers, it's, I, don't, I don't really know their formula because their overall numbers offensively are not good. Be in the central is their formula. Uh, but they're winning close ball games, and I think that's right. uh, there's something to that. I think def- like their defense has is, is done really well, maybe some timely hitting. Uh, what are, I'm curious. What, let me look at their stats with uh, one-run games. That, I feel like that is – indicative of the kind of team that you are like if you can't win one run games it's gonna be a tough season for you you know like hold on i gotta get to their team page here uh they've got their bullpen's doing good things their offense is atrocious 29th in ops reminder oakland's in the league this year um they've been looking for four they've been looking for any shot of life from their offense for Two years now. Eight and four in one run games. That's good. That's what you want. And look, man, I, I don't know. Like you took it two or three from the Royals, who are also like kind of on a historically bad. Pace. They're getting they're getting covered up by the Oakland. So shout out Riley Green. Shout out Riley Green. Be the dude. Make your, what are his overall numbers right now? I'm going to look that up, too. Make make your cards worthwhile. Um, Orioles, I love your team. Um, Ooh, Riley Green, 801 OPS, doing things okay. 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 Don't doing let it things click. defensively. I like that. All right, last series in the AL right here. Whatever you want again. I'm, I'm good on this. I mean... Sh- Five and one against the Jays and the Yankees, both on the road. Like you go five and one on the road against two teams in your division, two really good baseball teams. Yes, the Jays are a really good baseball team. They'll figure it out. That's impressive. I, I'm done. We're done asking Baltimore to prove it. Like 
Chris Rose asked me if this was a prove it series for Baltimore. I said no. Like they they proved it, dude. Like they're able to do it, um, and they kind of do it in different ways too. Every once in a while, they'll get a great start. Like Gibby gave them, uh, but this team can score runs, man, and they can score in bunches. Like you said, that's that second game they put the eight spot up. Uh, they can hit the long ball. They can run the bases. They can play defense. Like it's a fun team to watch. Uh, and the Yanks, you know, good for them. They came back in that first game because they could have got swept. Yeah, I mean they were they were up five one in the second game. It's I guess some some Yankee fans felt like they got punched in the face, and they're like, "Oh, we gave up a four run lead." You came back against a four run lead the night before. And they the, were one pitch away, right? I mean, Judge was down o two to and Bautista, got hung a freaking splitter, and that was <laughs> oh, sick. Um, that yeah, man, I I. This AL East is going to be a bloodbath all year. All year. And uh, the Yankees need to get that lineup depth going. Trev, people are starting to talk about Volpe in not a great way. And guess what? You're talking- what do they expect out of this kid? <laughs> when, when, you, when you give him the job and you make the drama and he's from Jersey and you're the Yankees and you, uh, you know, when you get your own media cycle going... Um, yeah, I don't know. You could start to get a tart. His at bats have looked a little tough lately, so hopefully that he's a rookie. They're going to, it's I gonna know, be peaks and man. valleys, people like it's not going to be steady because he's a rookie. What I liked about this series is Bautista gives up the homer to judge, but then he's in there the next inning, gets the or next game, gets the save, and then I'm, I'm assuming he was down after pitching two days in a row. And then they have Cano just step in, yeah, do his thing. Cano so like they have it. a formula, they have a formula in Baltimore. Um, it's working. Gibby, the quote. Oh, Gibby God, quotes. I love this quote. Yeah, I know. This is why it's funny. He's not a quote guy. I think we're one of the best teams. We're one of those juggernauts. Kyle Gibson saying that his team, the Baltimore Orioles, are juggernauts is not something I had going on, say, last year, two years ago. And here we are. And it's true. Yeah. Go O's. And I like their freaking City Connect jerseys. People need to chill out. They look good. I hope my Yanks get invited to the party this year because I could see I could see Tampa, Baltimore, and knock on wood, hopefully my Yankees with a healthy Stanton and Rodon. Those three teams could have one like one of the more electric AL East races I think we've seen in a little while. Um, How many teams made the playoffs? Six for each league, se- or is it seven? Seven. I think it's six. Uh, six. Six. Yeah. Top three division winners, winners and three wild cards. Dude, I mean, the AL West, is, I think, is going to put somebody in there. They might put two, Trev. That's what I'm saying. Well, they have to put one. I'm saying they might put two teams. Central's going to give you one. <laughs> Locked. Okay. it's gonna be, This is going to be great. I can't wait for the end of the season. In September, I want to see where all the standings are at. We're going to start doing some schedule watching. Who's clinching? It's going to be fun, man. Trev, let's burn through some IL quick. IL always quick. gets a little screwed, but it's interleague play. I don't know. What year is it? There's not that many series. Scheduled tweet, Texas Rangers. Win two out of three over the Pittsburgh Pirates. Scheduled tweet, Nate Evaldi. Nine innings. My God, when is he going to stop? The Pirates, they won the first game of the series. Rangers took the final two. Will Smith with a big 1.2 inning save. I think it was the 100th of his career. Nathaniel Lowe. Till the land and talk to Chris Rose. He has a big game. And Rose rotation week. Texas is fucking good, man. Uh, that's my. That's, put that in my scouting binder. Giants take two out of three from the Twins. To Trev's maybe two favorite teams. Giants won the first two. Uh, opener day. And then Alex Cobb, man. Cobb and Gray, a sneaky, awesome pitching matchup. Uh, Conforto starting to go for them. 
like that. And then the Twins win that final game. Hot boy Joe Ryan. Uh, Edward Julien returns to the leadoff spot and gives them a little juice with a leadoff homer. Uh, I don't know. Trev will probably talk about it. I'm kind of over it. Brewers Astros. Strohs put up a 12 spot in that first game and Javier deals. But then they get shut out the rest of the way by your Brewers pitching and defense, Trev. Uh, we saw them in some of those defensive numbers. Owen oh, Miller's been raking for them. That was a sneaky Brewer snag. Slick Willie goes yard in that final game. I saw Joey Weimer's name pop up, Trev. I know you've been oh. looking for him and what, what other freshmen are doing. Uh, and that's what happened in the interleague play. So, Deeps. Um, so what do we got here? We got three series. We got three series. We have the Texas Rangers continuing to do their thing. Pirates continuing to not do their thing. That was, we, when the Pirates got off to that good start, did we say like, eh, I'm not so sure about this? Or did we ever like give in and say, hey, this is a good team? I think we were always like, oh, I'm not so sure. Trev, I was the guy in their TPP who said they could be this year's Orioles. And after that hot start, I sold stock. Um, oh, nice. You hit the bump. Yeah, I hit the bump. So, like, I'm not surprised. I do think in that central they can hang around 500, but where they were at wasn't sustainable. Nice start by uh, a rookie here. Uh, Louis Ortiz in game one for the Pirates. You can take that away. You go seven and two thirds with two earned runs. Nice. Mm. Um, so they win that game. Way to go. That's what you need. Get your starter to go out there and pitch like that. But then after that, it was all freaking Rangers. You mentioned Yovaldi, another freaking nine inning complete game. Uh, Martin Perez showed up, and their offense is going to hit. They're going to score runs. That's what they do. If you match up a good start, they are going to win that game. That's the bottom line right now. Like when you when you have that good of an offense who relentlessly scores runs for you, put up a good start, you're going to win. Two out of three for the Pirates. Scheduled tweet, like you said. Uh, good on them. It's going to be a it's going to be a really good team that does not make the playoffs this year. Um, are you saying that the Rangers are a really good team that's not going to make the playoffs? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that it's Memorial Day weekend and there's going to be a lot of injuries and there's going to be trades and there's going to be prospects and there's going to be guys that have mo massive second halves and bad second halves that I don't know the picture, but man, there's a Rangers, a Blue Jays, a, uh, a Mariners, a Yankees. Someone ain't going to be at the dance that really thinks they're going to be at the dance. Pirates 19 and 9 in April, 5 and 15 in May. They haven't won a series since the end of April. Hello. Was uh, that like a schedule thing? Like their schedule wasn't that bad in April. They caught the they caught the Cardinals at the right time, even though they split with them in a four game set. They took a series from Houston. They swept Boston. Um, they played the Dodgers and won a series. Um and then they played the Rays, and the Rays ruined them. I guess that's what happened. Mm, broken. <laughs> yeah. Right? They played, they played the Rays and then Toronto. They went 0-6. And, and they lost the series to Colorado, to Baltimore. Split with Detroit in a two-game, or lost to Arizona, or lost to Texas. So, yeah, this was uh, – it's been a tough month for them. Those Pirates. were the two best teams linking up. Um, Trev, you're my twins guy. Whatever you want there. Good for the Giants. Back at 500. Like, okay. All right. Yes. yes, they're doing a good job. On the twins' side, they're just not hitting. They are just not hitting. The last game, they put some runs across. That was nice. Uh, but they're just trying to figure it out. Again, a lot of guys banged up for that team, too. Correa, they're trying to figure out what's going on with him and the foot. Um, Cobb, I think he gave up like a leadoff homer to Buck in the first. But his stuff is nasty, dude. Like the split and the and the two seam, I guess he calls it a two seam. That, that sinker that he throws at like ninety five. They really play off each other. He's been really good for them. Um, but the twins have 
they did they need to find offense. That's why they're struggling. That's why they're hovering right around 500. I think they're two games over. Uh, their pitching's great, but they just have not been able to find offense. And they, they're going to have to figure that out. I don't know how. Giants join the party. Twins stay in the central, and you're good. Um, speaking of central division leading teams, the Milwaukee Brewers take two out of three from Houston. Trev, we saw them on all of our defensive stats we got, and it made things make a little more sense that the Brewers are elite defensively. Um, and man, back to back shutouts versus Houston, who they've seen their offense fluctuate this year. Yeah, great start for Christian Javier in game one, uh, 12 2 Astro. So the bats were going there. They touched up Burns. I think they had like four homers off him. Jordan Alvarez hit a grand slam. He's. Some of the numbers. Yeah. All of the numbers. All of the numbers. This guy are absolutely insane. Where's he from again? Cuba. Uh, Why can those guys just rake, dude? Yeah. Uh, love that. Yeah, but it's, you know, you get beat by the Astros 12 2. You see your ace get touched up. What does that mean for the series? Oh, nothing. We're going to shut him out the next two games 6 0, 4 0. Uh, Adamus kind of doing some things there. Owen Miller. Yeah. Talk about a little Owen Miller. 882 OPS. Um, 141 OPS plus. That's 41% better than league average. If you don't know, he's doing it. And he came over from what? The the Indians? Guards? Guardians? Guardians. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, my God. Canceled. Shit. Where is the brew crew? Hold on. Let me let me get this, this central up. Yeah, Where I know you read it. Brew crew. One and a half up on the Pirates who are going the opposite way. I mean, it's their division to lose. Cardinals are coming. I, I just don't know if that's a week or a month, but Cardinals are coming. 85 wins gets the division. 85 wins gets the division. I don't know if I'm up on that. Okay. And Houston, uh, keeping pace with Texas, they're going to be fine. Altuve had to come out of a game. They said he was sick. Uh, do we have? Is there a follow up on that? Beavers, can you check that for us? Jimmy reported poops, but yeah, he just he they they he he walked off the field, and I don't. They said he was sick. Can I tell you who's been having healthy poops? Yeah, tell me. My do dog you? Noodle. Hmm. Which, by the way, healthy poops are a good thing. Um, yeah. You know, they measure babies, dogs, I guess adults too. Um, and part of the reason is the farmer's dog. Mm. Uh, they have put together, you fill out a quiz about your dog. Mine is Noodle. Different breeds, size, all of that. They put it into the equation and they get the right food for your dog that helps them maintain their ideal weight, which is one of the biggest indicators of a full, healthy life. And that's what you want from your pup or runes. Um, healthier coat, skin, better breathing, easier digestion, and smaller, better poops. How about that? They even have it in the ad read. So if your dog is old, Young, big, small, it's always the right time to invest in their health. Get 50% off your first box at thefarmersdog.com slash johnboy. There's a link in the description, and this is off the read, off slash on the record. Noodle fucking goes nuts for this stuff. Uh, he gets that. When he sees that coming out, oh boy, it's on. So go to thefarmersdog.com slash johnboy, 50% off your first box. Standout performances. Stand performances. Who stood well, shout, out? Shout out Noodle for good poops. That's yeah. a standout performance right yeah. there. Am I going first? You go first, Trev. Okay. I went with a couple bro skis here. You know I'm a big bro guy. Yeah. Like bro it up all day long. I love my brother. Marshall's a great dude. Have you ever met Marshall? Big boy. I haven't. Yeah, he's a big, he's a big boy. About 6'4, like 280. Mm. Just you can't get low enough, Jake. Hmm. You and him in a wrestling match, it would be bad for you. I'll get low. I've never seen him lose a fight. <laughs> he will challenge him because he's big, and he just 
He protected you my whole life. I've seen me lose a fight, so I'm I'm Team Marshall right now. We would go to these punk shows, and I'd be in the pit, and like Mm -hmm. I was a little skinny kid, and the guys would be like fucking getting a little too aggressive with me, and then Marshall would just come. Like it was fun. I was an idiot because I had my big bro Mm -hmm. to back me up. (laughs) Anyways, Monday. Lord Escurial Jr. of your snakes goes four for four with a double, a homer, and two ribbies. That's a nice day. His season stats are great. His career stats are nice. He's a good ball player right there. Well, you know who his brother is? Yuli Guriel, who's also having yeah. a nice start to the year. He says, you know, bro, you went four for four on Monday, and mom was like super stoked and like saying how much she loves you. I'm going to do it too. On Wednesday, he goes four for four. With a triple and RBI, two runs. You know what he says? I'm going to steal a base right in your face, mm. younger bro. And I just love thinking about that conversation. Like, oh, you went 4-4? Four, four. I'm going to go 4-4. Four, four. And think about, like, your bro and you just playing Major League ball together. I love it. Where are those guys from, Jake? Cuba. Cuba. Because they yeah, rake. Cuba. Yeah. So shout out the Guriel brothers. I just, I don't know, man. Something about... Playing with your bro in the big leagues is just amazing to me. It's crazy. I mean, we uh, again, we we very much appreciate these things at a fan level. That like, yeah, that's that's nuts. And hey, maybe Yuli gets going. I know he he had kind of a slower start. Lourdes has been has been going nuts for the snakes. Um, great standout, Trev. Thanks. Uh, um, I'm going to one guy, but it's actually two, and in a way, they're brothers. Um, I'm going to Shane McClanahan, the ace of the Rays. He casually dropped a seven innings pitch, one earned run. Um, You know, just boring Rays, Shane McClanahan, high velo, lefty baseball. Trev, his record is 8-0. and Is that good? Yes. That's pretty good. Uh, A 1-9-7 ERA, is that good? That's yes. good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. It's very good. Um, And I wanted to give an assist uh, on the standout to your and his now brother, Led Zeflin. Mm. Uh, because, Trev, he's 7 and 1 on the year. Um, He also had a 7 inning, 1 earn run start. Uh, not as flashy. Zero strikeouts for Led Zeflin in that game. You don't see a ton of those anymore. Um, But, yeah. Uh, just the top of the Rays rotation. Basically, everyone has an incredible record. And Shane McClanahan is the first one of three Rays starters to go 8-0 and to start the year. Can you name the other two, Trev? Three Rays starters to go 8-0 and to start the year. Okay. Um, David Price. Wrong. Um, no, I can't. Chris Archer. Matt Moore in 2013. And Charlie Martin, the salt man, in 2019. Stats brought to you by Dalton. Um, Matt Moore, famous uh, for his bullpen exploits in Anaheim right now. Ripping it up. Loving an elevator. How much should we talk about the Angels this app? God, uh, those guys at John Boy really no ball. Let's talk about something hotter. Hot as hell. Dirt nasties on fuego. That means I'm on fire, baby. Like Waco. Don't do that. I don't like those eyes at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elias Diaz went seven yep. for 15 in this, fe- in this series. Not Dalton Feely, but in this series, yeah. two doubles, three homers, four ribbies. Three homers and only four RBI. Let's go. People mm-hmm. hitting in front of him. Are you kidding me? Um, the second highest batting average in the, in the big leagues at 340. He's That's raking. Nice. He's raking. Okay. Yeah. I see you, Diaz. Uh, how about that DH in LA? JD Martinez. He went seven for fourteen, a double, three homers, five RBI, for a one dot seven. That's nice. Pete Alonso might hear more about him, so I'll skip over on that. Mm. But he had a nice little series there, four for eight. How about for your week of five nineteen through five twenty five? Rugi, <laughs> who delivered the punch heard round the world. That's. Do you think he's always going to be like? 
people remember him fondly because he squared up a punch. He's going to be such a weird asterisk in baseball history yeah. because of the punch, the homers, the homers, and the fact his name is Rugnet Odor. And and there's and they're all named Rugnet Odor, aren't they? Oh like yeah, his whole family. Yep. So, yes. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he goes seven for 16, three doubles, two homers, 11 ribbies. It was the most by anyone over this one week span through April. Odor was only batting a hundred, three for 30. Uh, but then he's killed it as of late. Uh, Toronto outfielder, George Springer was 11 for 25, a double, a triple and two homers, uh, two stolen bases, five walks, mm. doing his thing. Michael Kopek, two games started, 15 innings pitched in those two games. No runs, 19 Ks, one walk. That is how you do it right there. He's never had two consecutive starts where he's gone six-plus innings pitched with no one runs, and now he has. How about that? Okay. For the two-week span, this is what you want to be on. Two weeks hot. Michael Conforto, San Francisco Giants outfielder, 19 for 48, six homers in these two weeks, 13 ribbies, a 1.2. How about your relief pitcher for the Arizona Diamondbacks, Miguel Castro? Yeah. I think we've been talking about this guy for a while now. Seven games in these two weeks, six and a third, no runs, no earned runs, three walks, eight Ks, three saves. boy. Chris Sale, this is nice for... Uh, Boston fans, 15 innings pitched, only three earned runs, 17 Ks in those 15 innings pitched, and only two walks. I think that's a really nice one. Uh, they He pitches against the Diamondbacks. It'll be his first career start against the Diamondbacks in his career. Nice note by, nice note by Dalton right there. And that's Susan Fuego. Incredible stuff, Trevor. Um, Miguel Castro, man, feels like he's been around for – Forever and it it's kind How of how much does Miguel Castro weigh? Let's guess right now. I'm gonna look it up. Oh god. I think he's like six seven 160? 190. That's what he's listed. You say, oh yeah, he's a bit, he's tall. He's tall. So he kinda, he's, uh, I'll say one eighty five. How about him and go under, yeah. <laughs> how about finishing him and Chris Sale? Uh six seven two hundred? No way. Lie. He put on some weight. Is it all on the belly? What's up? He looks so skinny. Trev, I have some good news. Okay. Not a ton of IL updates. Uh, Eric Lauer from Milwaukee, don't love that. Santiago Espinal for Toronto, don't love that. Uh, your guy Michael Tonkin, check in, Trev. Um, neck injury. Yeah. Um, we had some guys get banged up that we're waiting to hear about. Uh, Brenton Doyle, Danny Chanson. Um, Trevor May is back. We like that. Uh Adam Simber, Kyle Hendricks returned. He was throwing some funk up there. Uh, Nito for the Mets. Not a ton of injury updates, and guess what? I like that. I like that. I like that, too. Trevor, it brings us to the best part of your weekend. Awards! And awards are brought to you by Trevor Plouffe, honestly, um, in the warehouse games. Forgotten Rotten going on a run. We're in the loser's bracket now, but uh, don't count us out. We've been in a loser's bracket mm. before. You know that. The uh, the games, the views, everything. If you haven't been in a live chat, you got to do that. They're electric. So go check out our Warehouse Games channel. It's been going nuts. Trev, your award. We're going Tolkien Baseball with my award. Yes. We're going back. I felt like it was time. And we're going to give the Toss Me Award. Now, you know that Helm's Deep was dire times for the good guys. Um, the Urukai were breaching the walls. They found the the weak link, if you will. There was a drain, and they put some... No one had known about, like, uh, dynamite, I guess. And all of a sudden, like, we can cock this stuff. Sar uh, Saruman, like, figures that out. So he's like, I'm going to put this dynamite uh, in the drainage thing and blow the whole wall up. Uh, but they were breaching the keep. And Aragorn and Gimli saw this, and there was one door they were trying to fix, and they needed some time. King Theoden was like, give me some time. Aragorn goes, how much time do you need? As much as you can give me. So for, for some reason, there's like this little side door right next to the big door. 
and they're on this ledge and uh, it's Gimli and Aragorn at this point. And there's all these Urukai banging on the door trying to get in. And Aragorn and Gimli know if they can just get to this walkway, they can beat off the Urukai and give them a chance to reinforce the door. Problem is, it's a big jump. And as we know, Gimli's not a big guy. It's a dwarf. He can't jump that far. Very dangerous over short distances. Right? He's a sprinter. Not a long jumper. So he looks at Aragorn and very meekly goes, touch me. And Aragorn looks at him like, what? I cannot jump the distance. You'll have to toss me. And then Aragorn reaches down to do it and he stops and he goes, don't tell the elf, which is a, just a classic line in the movie. Right. Aragorn tosses them over. Gimli starts freaking banging the Urukai. Aragorn just like one strides it. He's like, bro, like I'm like a, I'm a G. Jumps there, boom. Gives them enough time to reinforce the door. End up holding the keep. We all know Gandalf comes down the mountain, saves the day. It's awesome. That's my favorite movie of all time. Brett Sullivan of the San Diego Padres wow. got airborne. Wild pitch right here. If you can see, you can't see the score right now, but the Padres, we talked about how important this game was for them. They were down 6-5 at this moment. That would have made it 7-5, which is a completely different ball game. But Sullivan gets there, and he lays full extension. If you see right there, he just barely gets the cleat of Alex Call to save the day, tossed his body, laid it all on the line to defend his keep. And get the Urukai off of the door. Rugio Door ends up coming, mm. hitting the homer to put him ahead, saving maybe the Padres season. I just love the play, the the effort, if you will. And he said, "I felt it. I felt my glove hit his spike." I, I don't know if they challenged us or not, uh, but anyways, call ended up standing, confirmed, if you will. Sullivan lays it all on the line. Keeps the Padres season intact. That's the Toss Me Award. I mean, fantastic as always, Trevor. Um, like you're saying, how that game did wind down. And Brett Sullivan, how many... Look at that extension! How many Padres players are you listing before you get to Brett Sullivan? Be honest with yourself. And Austin Nola, who's been one of the worst catchers at throwing out people this year. You know, Brett Sullivan's getting some run. We talked about that earlier in the episode. You're right. I mean, a potential, like, you know, a devastating blow um, that the people of Helm's Deep wouldn't have been ready for otherwise. So, uh, fantastic. Um, so happy for the people that enjoy that and sad for the people that don't. Um, Trev, I'm going to give out the Ride It in Pen Award. I, uh, oh. I, uh, you know, when you fill out a baseball lineup... Usually fill it out in pencil. When you write anything you're, you know, you're not fully sure of, you write it in pencil. You gotta, you know, you might need to erase it. Pete Alonzo, we can start writing in pen. Um, he hit a homer yesterday, uh, and I was, you know, it pops up. Usually, you know, Pete Alonzo, home run, and then it gives you how many on the year. I was pretty shocked when I saw it was 19. 19 homers in 51 games. He is on a 50-homer pace. If you remember, this gentleman hit 53 home runs in 2019. He led Major League Baseball, or the National League, in RBI last year, 131. That's a lot. He is currently leading baseball in games played, in home run, and in RBI. Trevor, he is as a traditional slugger as you like to see. But the other thing I love, Trevor, and he stole a base this year. Um, he's 11-1 career on stolen bases. He's not exactly Paul Goldschmidt, but 11-1 is a really good number for whenever he's going to sneak one on you. And he's only made one error at first base this year. So we have this image of Pete Alonzo, first base slugger, you know, kind of meathead, humping railings, silly glasses. He has worked on getting better at some of the other aspects of his game defensively. Um, and 
he is just an absolute sluggo, man. Um, I love his energy. I love the way he plays. He loves baseball. He loves playing baseball. And you could tell it in the way he runs, those clips of him like falling over because he's trying to run as fast as he possibly can. Um, he's leading the National League in homer, home runs and RBI. Um, and he is just, he's a beast, man. Career OPS plus of 140. He's at 145 this year, which is where he was at last year. Uh, you can write him down in pen, man. And Trev, my last note on Pete, because I do love him so much, 161 games his rookie year. You normally play 162. That's pretty good. 57 out of 60 in the COVID season. Yep. 152 in uh, 2021. That's his low mark, 152. 160 last year. And again, he has bold on his page for his 51 games played this year. A bona fide slugger that plays every day and brings his energy. Sign me up. What was this award called? Write it in pen. Write it in pen award. I like it. When you're you can it. write. You can write his stats in pen. Because, you, you know, he's going off this year. These numbers are right on line with his career averages. 341 OBP this year. He's actually at 348 in his career. 559 slugging. He's a 537 career slugging. 900 OPS this year. Dude, he's got an 885 OPS career. He bangs the ball and then bangs the railing in the dugout. Mm. What's up with that? I, I feel like I thought you were going to go there at least. You didn't, so I had to throw it in there. Thank you. He's very passionate, and it's fun to watch. And, um, you know, the reason that it makes it more fun to watch when a guy's passionate if he has the numbers to back it up. If you don't have the numbers, sometimes right. you act acting a fool. Like it's like, what's going on here? But Pete Alonso can do whatever he wants on a baseball field. You want to know why? Because those numbers I just read off to you. He's gonna get broke off with some change too. Mm. Stevie, Uncle Steve. Yeah, when's is? Yeah, he's a free agent, twenty twenty five. One more year. Okay. With those numbers, and like, you know, he'll be. Right at 30, I guess, when he right before like 29, 30 at that point. Yeah. Good for you, Pete. He uh he also obviously you think Pete Alonzo, you think power. He he's got the kind of power. He hit an accidental homer uh the other day where it goes to right field. He basically misses it and it just leaves the ballpark and you're like, Wow, that's <laughs> that's different. That's yeah. different. Trevor Ploof. You're different, my friend. We got to send you to Chris Rose and send you off to a beautiful Memorial Day weekend. I hope everyone mm. enjoys it. I think we're going. We will Monday. be recording. We're going. Let's Monday. Let's go. Stop. We're different. So different. That's how you. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. Thank you for listening. Whoa. Six six six. Jesus. It's not six six six, but we're done with that stuff. Start a new lifestyle for me. If the devil ever came around me, my brother Marshall would just beat him up. Beat his ass. Yeah, Marshall's beat beating the, the devil's up. ass. Marshall, <laughs> go get him. You would love Marshall. Oh my God. Already do. Already do.